over 900 subscribers. I want to thank you very much. We're almost at a thousand. Please subscribe to the True Storytelling Channel. Thank you. So today we ask the question, what's true in storytelling? Storytelling would be true, not just if you're telling not a lie, but if you're getting deep into disclosure of existence. So I'm talking about an existential storytelling. Uh, so it's digging deeper than opinion or what we think we know about something. And Heidegger calls it facticity. We're getting at the facts of the situation. And this is essential to true storytelling. And that's the nature of true storytelling, the first principle, what's true. Then it takes a, a direction of, can you sustain what's true? For example, I'm 75 years old. I'm going to be 76. Just came out of stage four cancer, 28 radiation treatments, the intrigent deprivation therapy that destroys all your testosterone. And your quality of life just drops during all that treatment thing. So after the treatment, like I'm coming on the last month of my meds, where I don't have any more lupin shots, I don't take the advanced medicine to counteract my testosterone. So now my testosterone is gonna rise. I'm interested to see at my age, how much quality of life will will be returned to me. And actually it's gonna be more than it was originally because I have a better understanding of existence. So I'm understanding that the death march, you know, hopefully I have another 20, 25, 30 years. And things that were important to me before cancer and things that are important to me now like my relationship to my wife, my friends, my relatives, the earth, those things are much more important than accumulating a bunch of meaningless publications. So those are the things that I'm looking at at the essence of existence. I've also found out that if you have the right kind of insurance to get the right kind of treatment and you have the right kind of money and support, you can defeat cancer, you can come back from cancer, then it's a matter of your own personal willpower. Are you going to do the resistance exercises? Are you going to have the diet? Are you going to enjoy life day by day, return to a sense of health, happiness, and terrificness? And that's a question to really look at because what happens to the older people? I had a chance to stay in an assisted living facility with a, a relative who's much older than me. And what I noticed is all of the people there around the same age group in their 80s and 90s are, you know, with their walkers and their wheelchairs. Uh, I guess relatives have to put them there because various reasons. But uh, have we really looked at this institution to see if it's for the best health and care and well-being of the people? I'm wondering, should they be with their family? We've asked this person to be with us and we have space for them. And I'm wondering, would they be better off without an institution? When you institutionalize somebody, uh, you remove them from the family situation and you remove them from the day-to-day -day life of the family. And it's easy for them to just drift into a sense of depression, of separation. And the ones that seem to be making it have formed little in-groups like they had in school and they're going out for shopping expeditions, they're playing the bingo, they're playing cards, they're having a more active social life. But if that's not the case, if the person is just going from the room to breakfast, back to the room until lunch, back to the room until dinner, back to the room until the next day, 
without really seeing anybody, I don't know if that's a kind of an existence that's a quality of life. So good wishes to everybody that's in assisted living or more uh, intensive nursing homes and all those institutions. But I'm wondering if we, if we have a society just put old people on the side. If you look at uh, when I came out of the university, that institution, you know, they give you a watch, they have a little lunch, uh, a dozen people get together and say nice things and get a few cards. And then you never get asked back to that university. Uh, you're replaced with a younger person at a, young, at a much less salary, somebody less outspoken, easier to uh, control by the administration. And then, you know, your life of scholarship just drifts, drifts out. Um, fortunately, I go to Sweden, I go to Denmark, I go to France, give presentations, um, do a lot of YouTubing, as you can tell. And I try to have a good intellectual life because coming back from cancer, you gotta have a good physical existence and you gotta have a good mental existence, intellectual existence, you gotta have good social relationships. Those are the three keys. So it'll be interesting to see if I can get more joy and more quality of life now that I'm coming back and that's my hope for the future. So that's my story of the future. And that's a little bit about true storytelling, digging deep. And I wish you all a wonderful and healthy and happy day.